Well, since we have Michael and Gene here, does somebody want to just uh, give a quick brief synopsis of what we've been going over? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's listening? <laughs> I'm going to preach it over again. Yay. Yay. <laughs> what is wrong with these people? <laughs> All right, well, our, our basis scripture for what we're getting into is found in Matthew 13, 35. And um, it was Jesus saying this, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. And as uh, we've gone through several times, <clears throat> uh, that particularly that last part, but the whole verse just got hold of me because uh, to me, speaking the parables of Jesus and and wisdom that has been hid from the from the foundation of the world didn't seem the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like here's a par here's a good parable. You know, a guy went out and dug a ditch. You know. Okay, now that's the wisdom that was before the world. But that's what that's what Jesus said it was the parable. And, um, and of course, then the next part that grabbed me was to realize that um, he's trying to teach us um, things uh, that are not based on this world. He's trying to bring a wisdom that is not based on this world and it's not based on our experiences or on our problems or on all those kind of things that rather it's based on what was before the world, which, what was that? Well, that was God. That's the Father. And that's the Son. And that's the Holy Spirit. And, and instead of um, the parables, apparently, instead of the parables about being little, little special little segments of um, uh, storytelling, that would um, maybe, you know, we would get enlightened to the meaning and we would read the parable for that purpose. But Jesus puts them in a completely different category. And um, so that, that kind of launched us into um, uh, a search uh, in Genesis because we wanted to start seeing some of the things that were there, you know, before and, and during the foundation of the world. We wanted to see if the Lord would speak to us. We wanted to, we wanted to, to start approaching uh, Him on a different basis instead of our problems or our world or our situations. And um, so... Um, uh, if you want to turn with me, just as a starter for tonight, it's Luke chapter 19. Luke 19, verse 41. Speaking of Jesus. And when he was come near, when he was come near, mm. when he came near, mm. you know, we're supposed to draw near. But he continually draws near. And when he came near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. Saying so, these these words are not just uh, words, and they're not just a not a speech. Um, 
their heart words that are coming through tears. Heart words that are coming through tears. Saying, he wept over it, and saying, if thou hadst known, even thou, even thou, at least in this, your day, not counting from the foundation of the world, but right now in your day, when I was here with you, at least in this, thy day, the things which belong, does that sound a little bit like what we were talking about last night? Mm -hmm. The things that belong to you, mm -hmm. unto thy peace, mm -hmm. but now they are hid from your eyes. Mm -hmm. They're hid from your eyes. And um, you know, if we could just get out of reading the Bible like it's a book, and we could and we could get past the stories into the heart of of what's going on. Uh, then, then the Lord could reach us. He could share more with us. So at the end of this, I had put in my notes as I was studying that verse, show me your heart, Jesus. Show me your heart. So remember, you have freedom underneath your breath or however you want to pray if something touches you and you want that or you are moved by that to, to respond to him. So um, I had written this some time back and the Lord brought it to my remembrance tonight. I'd labeled it the questions we need to have answered. And I wrote, we often come to God with questions for the needs of our life. Our life. The needs of our life. If we hear anything from Him, if we hear anything from Him, we apply it with the wisdom of this world. Because we don't, if we don't know the wisdom that is it's not, does not float within time, if you will. It's not realized within time. We, um, we hear, if we hear anything from him, we apply it with the wisdom of this world. We will see the Bible through that lens. The Bible will be seen through the same glasses that we got our prescription for, meaning that our religious view of, you know, what it's all really about. We come looking for answers. We come looking for answers to our questions about what we should do. And the Bible meets us with its own questions. Its own questions. Repeatedly pointing us to something higher. Meaning we're, we're looking for our little answers for our little life. And, there's, and that's Jesus weeping over us. Because if you just knew what this was all about, what, I, what it was that I've already given you. We come looking for answers to our questions about what we should do, and the Bible meets us with its own questions. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> with, with his, God's questions. What he would want us to ask. <laughs> and repeated, repeatedly, he points us to something higher, but we don't understand. We don't even think he answers. <laughs> Or if we think he answers, we apply the wisdom of this world instead of that 
which is the mind of Christ from the foundation of the world. And then a few more thoughts right along this line. We think we need to have answers, but discover that the Bible presents us with answers to a completely different set of questions. We're looking for answers for our life, and it's, it's presenting us with a completely different set of questions that we should be. In other words, he's not rushing to answer everything in our life and all that. He's, he's having to do an extra step, and that is send back questions to us about something higher something that will draw us away from our life, something that will draw us away from our selfishness or our self-centeredness or our, you know, the things that we hold as so important without any thought of what he holds, what he wants, what brings him to tears. Mm -hmm. It brings him to tears. Mm. So I ended that with a, well, let me read it again. We think we need to have answers, but discover that the Bible presents us with answers to completely different set of questions that we didn't even know enough to ask for. Mm. But we still have, if you could only see, Jesus said. What was the wording? Mm. If thou hadst known, even thou, the things which belong to thy peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. And then it's meant to open us up to God's agenda. And in the process, it's meant to move us from our agenda. So we were, we were going through Genesis, particularly this time, um, last night, uh, what I called with the victory version of the creation of man, the victory version. Uh, and we mainly stuck with chapter one. But we did find out that there was another version called chapter 2 of Genesis. Completely different set of things that are going on. And we wonder, we, we want it always straightforward. You know, we don't want, we want it to make sense to our brains. We want it to, to, to you know, lighten our eyes and then we, we carry some jewel away. He's not trying to give us jewels or you know, he's trying to enrich us. But to do that, we have to jump the rails of our understanding and get on his track. We do. I do. I do. I, I do. I, you know, I'm sharing this because I'm being dealt with. <laughs> because this is... I see his heart. I see the importance to his heart. I see, I see what I don't see. If you understand what I mean, I don't see it yet, but I see what I don't see. That I there's things that make him weep, and maybe we do that all the time. Maybe we do it all the time. I don't know, but. I don't think we want to. So, uh, so we're going to look at the, the second version of, of Adam, and that's uh, turn with me to Genesis chapter two. <clears throat> So in chapter one, you remember that God. <clears throat> It, it was beautiful. It was beautiful in words and in thoughts. Um, and it, it felt glorious or victorious. 
God, in the beginning, God creates Adam, but he doesn't just create Adam. He says, let us make man in our own image. And then we talked about everything he said after that was like, well, first of all, it wasn't like what we perceive the story to be because it's not a story, it's a reality. We perceive God speaking to Adam. You remember us getting into that? Mm -hmm. He's speaking to Adam, but he's not speaking to Adam. Mm -hmm. He's speaking to that which he just created in his image and his likeness. And he's going to talk to that being named Adam. <laughs> he's going to talk to him like he's his, mm -hmm. like he's in his image, like, mm -hmm. like, like he could, like almost like a father in the sense that he can, he can tell him what's all in his heart and what you are and what you've been, quote unquote, birthed into. And, you know, and then he, he talks about dominion. And we went through that, that, you know, I've given you dominion. And we found out that it's dominion is not rulership, but it is the ability to hear what God says from his wisdom and to have dominion over anything that's going to try to turn you from that. Mm -hmm. So you can use that dominion all the time. But we want dominion. I want to be strong. I want to be rich. I want to be a lord over all of this stuff. And But the picture in Genesis 1 is like that. It's like, you know, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And, you know, then he makes him and then let him have, let him have everything. Let him have everything. <laughs> and we're going, yay. Yeah, let me have it, Lord. Let me have it. So then we get to chapter two. And it's just, it's just crazy to us. All right, so let's start with verse 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. Does anyone see, uh, and you can feel free to speak up, does anyone see something interesting in those words? Rest. <laughs> Rest. Rest, okay. Well, that's an interesting word, for sure. Finished. Finished, yeah. Sanctified. Sanctified. Well, why don't we just quote it, the whole scriptures? <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't looking for interesting words. <laughs> yeah. That he used both created and made. Mm -hmm. That's there too. But listen, listen to this. I'm going to, I'm going to read the same thing, but I'm going to try to get you to see that it's, that it's pounding a certain truth home here. Okay. So, uh, uh, Verse 2, on the seventh day, on the seventh day. That word is going to be used like three or four times in this little bit here. Okay, On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made. Now continue to listen as I just said that, though. The seventh day, God ended his work, which he made. And then the next one says, he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. And then the next time, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work which he had created and made. Amazing. You see the repetition? Yeah. It's like, bam, bam, I'm speaking to you. 
You know, I'm talking. It's like God's trying to get something over there. You know, trying to hammer home something that that is true in his heart. But it's also going to be interesting to carry that thought all the way through this, this first part here. All right. So verses 4 through 7. <clears throat> These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb in the field before it grew. All right. So what pertaining to the wisdom of God that we've been talking about is mentioned here in, in particularly verse 5? Anybody? Kelly? Before the foundation of the world. Okay. Before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Jim? Seed. Seed. Okay. Okay. In, in relationship to the wisdom of God, there is this reality that it's all before, it exists before it manifests. That's what it's saying, isn't it? That's what it's saying. Uh, every plant before it was in the earth. Okay, so he made that. Well, where did he make it at? Does he have a plant somewhere? You know, a, a, a greenhouse. greenhouse somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's doing this stuff and then bringing them down. And, well, that's what it says, though. It says, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb in the field before it grew. So it's all there. But we have to trust God. Him, and we have to trust not what comes to us right now, but what's true in him and what's true in his heart. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's weeping because, um, you know, we're, we're not, you know, we're not really, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to put it. He's weeping because we're missing that which he had prepared for us if we'd only known it. You see what I'm saying? We're acting like it's not here. He's not here. We're not of him. He's, he, you know, he's not of us in that sense. It's not, you know, we, we call unto Christ up there in the heavens and <clears throat> instead of look to him who lives within us. And so, um, verse 5b, is the way I put that. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. All right, now, we talked a little bit about this, but I want to really get into this one tonight. Uh, it's just really interesting that in, the, the, in chapter 2, God finished this thing, but then he says, but there's not a man to till the ground. Well, there's only one man. <laughs> right? Only one man. God's going, well, he ain't here yet. Listen to the wisdom of God, folks. Not my wisdom. Listen to the wisdom of God. Listen to wisdom. See, that's one of the things that I said last time was, you know, these things, we try to read the stories. We try to read the stories and figure out the stories instead of the wisdom that created the stories. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm telling you there's a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to read the stories, but I mean, there's a difference between something eternal that wrote that and has, you know, just a, a full garden of seed and, and feed, you know. And 
a story that we're trying to figure out, okay, this word goes over here. Oh, and this word matches something over in you know, the, the New Testament or something. It's got to be well beyond that. It's got to be... I go back up here. So, I will open my mouth in parables, and I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. It's got to be coming from there, not from something that came, was made, and then we, you know, we're working it. We can understand the scriptures up and down, and we can match things. You can. You can do that. You can match all kinds of stuff. But there's a wisdom that's beyond our wisdom. <laughs> a wisdom beyond our wisdom that created those sayings. You know, I mean, you gotta you gotta love the one with the with the seed that's uh, you know before it was in the earth and every plant of the field before it was in the earth. There's something going on, and it's not just basic Christianity. It's God's heart. And so, um, so, so he brings up this, and this, this, this is real important here. When he says, there, and there was not a man to till the ground. All right, so I'm going to give a little, I'm going to give a hint here. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be bigger than what I've been given so far. <laughs> and that is, there was not a man to till the ground, but there was an overlord who had dominion, but not a servant yet. That's getting into the wisdom of God, folks. <laughs> it's, it's getting in there. Now it's starting to move into it more. Okay? So verse 6, but there went up a mist. Let's see, we already did that one. Oh, no, we didn't. Verse 6, and there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Verse 7, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Okay, let's stop right there. This is Genesis chapter 2 that started with it's finished, he rested, it's done. Right? So that should, everyone should go, that's weird. <laughs> you know, we should go, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. What do you, why are you bringing this in? You already said it over here. No, 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 no. He said something over there. He's saying something different right here. Something different. Wisdom of God. Before the foundation of the world. He, it was in him. It's the way he thinks. It's what motivates him. It what guides him. It is, it is his being as far as approach. So, you know, we just assume that Oh, the writer got it mixed up. You know, the writer got it mixed up and he put it over <laughs> over here. He should have just put this little part back underneath chapter one. Right? No. 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 Okay. And I've already given the secret away. But anyway, let's onward Christian soldiers, amen. <laughs> All right, um, and the and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay, what what may be the three most important words in verse seven? Look at it and see if you can figure out. Formed. Three breath most. Life. Breath of life. Living, 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 living. Okay. What? Begun. Begun to live. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. All of, all of this um, of the breath of life and man became a living soul is the result of something else. Yes. <laughs> that's going to be important, but that's uh, that's not that's not it yet. Save that one. <laughs> okay, so Deb was on to it. It's God formed man. All right. If you compare chapter one with chapter two and chapter one, God created man. But now, in the seventh day, It is. It's the seventh day. Check it out. You know, the day of rest. Yeah. Now he's forming the same guy. That's right. He's forming. Wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. He's forming something. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, you know, I want to just say that's good that you brought up dust because that's going to be an incredible word mixed into this whole thing. So, um, uh, so in Genesis 1, 27, God created man on the sixth day, right? Genesis 1, 1, 27. Genesis 1, God what? Created man on what day the sixth day in genesis 2 god did what to man he formed man and on what day was that the seventh day okay now we're all it may not make sense to you uh, yet but that's the way it's written i'm not i'm not switching anything up here this is this is all really the way it is and it was, you know, I mean, it was years ago that I first noticed it and went, what the heck? But, I, I, you know, I was probably too high and mighty or thinking, nah, I know what that means. Or, you know, or you know, they made a mistake. The writer of the Bible made a mistake, you know. But now I'm hungry and now I want to know the Lord. And now I care. And now I care about him and I care about what he cares about. So... Um, so in Genesis 1, 27, God created man on the sixth day. But here in Genesis 2, 7, after God had rested on the seventh day, he now forms man. Okay. And again, I mean, I, I think we could, I, I do think that we could catch some of these things if, if you're just like a really good scripture searcher. Or something you could catch some of these things, but you're not going to catch the wisdom of God by that. He's gonna He's gonna have to speak things that were before the world, you know. These things, and we think of things, but it's really His wisdom, His way of thinking. Okay. Uh. So um, let's see where I was. Okay, so also in Genesis, this is chapter 1. We're just referring back to some of the stuff we talked about, remember? In Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 27, God created man on the sixth day, um, but now he forms man. Also in Genesis 1, 26 through 30, God is bestowing the whole creation that was made to give to man to have dominion over, okay? The whole creation. I give unto you all that. Do y'all remember when we were studying, looking at that and, and hearing the Lord as if we were in his image and him saying, you know, unto you I give. It's done. Remember? Yes. You remember going, yay! Anybody remember yes. that? Okay, good. It's still yours. He's not going to take it away. 
<clears throat> yeah. No, no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay. So, dominion to man. <clears throat> and God gave him dominion as if he is Lord of the manor. I use those words. But in chapter 2, 5, in passing, he mentions that there's no man to till the ground. This is, we're already here up in, what, verse 7 or something? Or, but in verse 5, he brought that up out of the blue. I mean, you know, just out of thin air, he he's talking about this and that. And then he says, you know, the scripture says, but there is no man to till the ground. There's, we don't have, you know. And then it goes back into the, all the stuff that we're familiar with. So it says, let's see. Um, so then, after he says that about there's no man to till the ground, then he mentions that he, yes, yes. Then he mentions that he formed man. Okay, he forms, not creates there, because man was already created a day earlier. Okay. What's the tie-in? Well, we're going to go, you know, we're going to think of all kinds of stuff. You know, this is how theological books get written. <laughs> Everybody has, a, has a, an opinion, you know. And, you know, mine could end up being ridiculous to you or far-fetched or whatever. Or it could be the wisdom of God. That's, you have to check. You know, Jesus said, or Paul, you know, Jesus said, search the scriptures daily. So, um, so what does he form the created Adam for? Y'all are starting to catch on, you little cheaters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's why verse 8 is next. Verse 8 says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. I rest my case. Amen. <laughs> I rest my case. Clearly, this is this is what's going on. So let's let's kind of remember again. Chapter 1. We whoo, created in God's image. Thank you. This is great. Well, not only that, I'm going to give you all this stuff. Everything. Everything belongs to you. Yay. This is wonderful. Yay. Chapter two. What, what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on? And the devil hadn't even showed up. <laughs> no, no mention yet of the devil. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, I wrote, so, so he now, speaking of God, so he now plants the garden that he longed to have a gardener to tend over. Because I, I saw it as something that he really wanted. Because he kept mentioning it. There was no man to, to tend my garden. You know? And he knew Adam wasn't it. Because he was no garden tender yet. He was, like I said, an overlord. A master. But all of a sudden he's put in a different position. I mean, can you imagine if, if God said, I bless you with all of this stuff, you know, and then uh, he doesn't take it away, but he puts you over in a low, low position. Even this thing about dust. Let's see if it's it's coming up here. It should be. Um, let's see. Uh, well, so so he now plants the garden that he longed to have a gardener to tend it over. Then he puts the man in it. Finally, in verse fifteen, it gives us the reason for forming man. And here's verse fifteen. Just slip down a little bit. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden. To dress it and keep it. There's no question now. Yeah. Now we got it. Amen. You know. 
Well, wait a minute. What are you doing with me? I'm a, I'm a Lord. I'm an overseer. I, all of this is mine. This isn't fair. This, this can't be fair. Some of you may know the wisdom of God, and so you know that uh, this is not only fair, this is God. But we shall yet move, move on. Okay, so this is what I wrote on that, that that was the long way around to show that God's, that God's uh, purpose or his original plan for man was to make him lord over everything that was made. But now he will start him off as a keeper of God's private garden. Amen. Okay, may I add this one little line under that? I'll say that last line. But now he will start him off as a keeper of God's private garden. I want to add this little line. Keep. Keep. What God cares about. Yes. He's gone. The Lord is gone. He's gone? No, the Lord is gone. Yes. His garden. Yes. Yeah. Yes. His garden. Because he here he's created everything and he creates all of this stuff and and then uh, he makes this garden. And he doesn't let Adam know that he's going to make a gardener out of him, no longer just a ruler over all things. I'm going to put you over this garden. Okay. So, but according to verse 15, the man who was not made of garden soil, the one who was formed, the one who was formed, not created, the one who was formed, was formed from what? The dust. the dust. He's not made of garden soil. Mm. Everything around his feet is garden soil. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not contradicting the flow there. It's, it's true. It's a true. But according to verse 15, the man who was not made of garden soil was placed in a garden as a gardener. He was not even as valuable as the ground he tended. Mm -hmm. He's dust, and that's garden soil. Mm -hmm. you, see the, you see this when comparing verse 8 and verse 9. In verse 8, into the garden God placed the man whom he formed. From what? Dust. Dust, okay. Um where am I here? For, uh, but he was put into a garden where, and this is a quote out of that, into a garden where out of that ground would grow, here it is, a quote, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Wow. This is rich soil, pleasant, good, just to look at. It looks great. It's just it's it's good for food. Mm, I love this garden. You know, this dirt really brings forth good stuff. And I'm just dust. Don't complain yet. <laughs> Don't complain yet. Um so man was not yet in the ground as a seed. Do you know John 12, 24? The Gospel of John? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm getting to love you. <laughs> oh, you got I already love her, so... <laughs> Except a seed, except a corn of wheat, fall into the ground, fall into the ground and die, what? Then what? But if it dies, bears fruit, bears much fruit. Okay. So God's working on a completely different level than we think, isn't he? 
I mean, he's <laughs> he's using wisdom that doesn't match our wisdom. We think if God creates us in his image and then he makes all of this stuff and says, just have dominion over it. It's all yours. Then whoopee, we're going to live as kings and we're, everything's going to be great. And then he takes the king and he says, I've got this garden and I'd like you to take care of it. Okay. And, uh, you know, and I, I really want you to, to till it and keep it. And it's almost like, well, you're saying your garden is more important than me. Uh, you know, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. This isn't right. Here we go. Pity party. <clears throat> so, um, so man was not yet in the ground as a seed. Yeah. <clears throat> But he's in the right place. God's funneling him to the right place, to the right spirit, to the right heart, to the right way. So man's not yet in the ground as a seed, nor was he made from the garden soil, but was made from the dust of the ground. All right. So I, you know, as I was meditating on this um, last night, I think it was. You know, you, you just, you can run with things, you know, when you're searching the scripture. But I don't want to run with anything. I want to be steady. And I just want to be with him. And I want to walk with God. You know, it really doesn't talk a lot about running with God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you know, Paul said uh, that uh, the, the Greek uh, words there in Galatians is I was out distancing all my brethren in, in this in the Jews religion like that's the highest because I run how about trying to just slow down and walk with God just walk with him he'll talk he'll talk if you're running and he's wanting to walk you're not going to get anything <laughs> All right, so, um, so verse we're going to read verse eight and nine, and verse eight and nine is still from everything I can gather, and I'm open to correction if I'm wrong. Is still the seventh day. It's still the seventh day, based on the beginning of this chapter and saying that. God rested and it's over with and he's not doing any more, you know. <clears throat> so, now listen to this. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. All right? Okay, so I thought you were resting. <laughs> you know. So you shouldn't be talking to God that way. <laughs> well, he told me he was resting. But maybe he rested from all that he had created. Mm -hmm. But he's still forming. Mm -hmm. Maybe he hadn't left and just said, well, it's all done. I don't know why you don't just grab it all up. He's still forming us. Thank God. Yeah. Yes. Thank God. <clears throat> so here he is. He's planting the garden. And then he's, uh, I like the wording here. And there he put the man. <laughs> Think about it, okay? God, you know, he plants this garden, and it says God planted the garden. That's why I think it's precious to him. Yes. You know, he created all the other stuff, you know, and all just sprang up, and then God goes and plants this garden. You're going, you like gardening? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. You like the soil? Yeah, I do. You like seeing things grow? Yeah, I like, I like that. Maybe we'll be learning something more of him before the world was in his heart. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll be seeing the fruit of his wisdom 
that confuses us and confounds us and, and throws us off and we don't get it. Remember, remember we, we talked about Elijah? You remember that? Elijah the prophet. We talked about how he was conquering, you know, all these priests and, you know, de defeated them and then destroyed them and, you know, and then Jezebel, you know, says, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. And he goes, why? I'm, I'm of God. I'm going to run away from you. And he runs, and runs, and runs, and he runs until he's worn out. And he still doesn't get it. And God has to send an angel to feed him and feed him because you're going to be gone for 40 days and 40 nights from this, this juniper tree. So he takes off and he goes and goes into the cave of darkness and of confusion and not understanding why am I, you know, I mean, it's like, how did I end up in this place? Can you kind of hear Adam maybe? Yeah. A little bit of, I thought I was a lord over all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got a little swath of land right here that you're giving me and I, I feel like it owns me. I don't own it. We're confused by the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. the mind of God, because it, he doesn't think the way we do. That's why Jesus said, I have to speak to you in parables. Speak what? Wisdom from before the world, the way that they, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we see that, we see that, we see that with, with, with uh, Adam. He's being, he's being planted. You know, he's being planted in a garden instead of in a castle with everything. And he's, um, and, and if he looks at himself, he goes, well, I'm dust and this, this is fertile soil. You know, and what has happened? Okay, well, is there any other examples in the Bible? Let's see, uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph, God says to him, you know, you're going to be this and their people are going to bow and everything and you're going to be a Lord and you're going to rule over and is it the same story so far? Okay, and, and, then, and then his own brothers beat him up and almost kill him and throw him in a ditch and all of that stuff starts happening. And do you think that at any point he went, what the heck is going on here with God showed me that and this is what's happening? That this can't be right. <laughs> Something went wrong. That's no, this is exactly right. Hallelujah. Has it ever happened before in the scripture? Let's see. <laughs> David, maybe David, when he was young and, and every, uh, you know, uh, Samuel goes to his own house and asks the father, you know, where's the kids? And what up was it? Seven of them go, you know, not him. No, 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 no. And then do you got anybody else here? <laughs> you got anybody else here? David comes in. You are anointed as the king. You're the king. You are now God's choice, even if Saul is sitting on a throne and doing his thing, you're the choice of God. Yeah. <gasps> How much dominion do I have? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> oh, this is so wonderful to serve God. <laughs> well, there's going to be a few hitches along the way. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to be a, it's not going to be a non-bumpy ride. It's going to be bumpy, and it's going to be hard at times. And things aren't always going to look like it's God. That's right. But it is God, if He's going to be able to, mm -hmm. to, make a dying seed out of you. Amen. If He's going to be able to bring you through the Spirit that Jesus is going to go through. Mm -hmm. 
Another great example, Jesus. Angels, you know, he's the savior of the world. Ooh, and they're all singing and stuff. And, you know, the shepherds are going, we got to see this thing. What's well, in a manger? Go check it out. <laughs> you know? And then Jesus, you know, he doesn't go from there to heights. He goes from there and has to run for his life, his whole family, his mother and father, down into Egypt. Until God says, okay, it's safe to come back. I mean, why wouldn't somebody say, look, you're God. You did this. Why don't you bring me back? Why don't you just come down, tell all these people I'm it, and let me, you know. Because there's a process, folks. There's, there's a forming. What did Paul say? I travail. I travail. He didn't say, I pray most religiously for you. He said, I travail in birth until Christ be what? Oh, oh my God, is that true? Wow. Randy, did you slip that word into our Bible? <laughs> no, it's always been there. It's always going to be there. There's a forming that must take place. And, and God... You know, like with Adam, God hadn't changed his mind. Like with David, God didn't change his mind. Joseph, God didn't change his mind. His own son, Jesus, God didn't change his mind. But there's a there's a, an understanding of the mind and the wisdom of God. There's a there's a way of seeing. There's a way of proceeding that is, you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And as long as we're trying to read the Bible with our understanding, we're going to end up messed up. We're going to end up confused and maybe like uh, Elijah in a dark, dark cave going, you know, oh, you know. And, and God has to say, you know, I wasn't in this, I wasn't in that strong thing, and I wasn't in this strong thing, and I wasn't in the fire or the earthquake or all of that stuff. And then he was in the still, small voice. And the still, small voice spoke deep wisdom. What are you doing here? Yes. <laughs> that's, what, that's what God said to him. That's what the still, small voice was. Yeah. What are you doing here? Get up. Amen. Amen. Get up and go back to where you last heard my voice before you got off the, the track. Mm -hmm. Abraham had to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he was there between Ai and Bethel, and then he went down into Egypt and got off track. Well, he, he picked up something down there. Anybody know what it was? Hagar. Okay, your wisdom you know, has messed you up again, Abraham. But then it says that he returns to the place of the altar, the last place between him and God. That's what you got to do. Elijah, that's what you got to do. You know, Paul, that's what you got to do. David, that's what you got to do. Joseph what you got to do. We read these stories and we don't see the wisdom of God in those things, you see. We see the story and then we scratch our head and then we look for little truths and nuggets hidden within the wording or the, or the story instead of show me your mind, show me your wisdom. I, I want to... I need to hear from you. I, but it's more than I need to hear from you. It's I want to know you and I want to relate to you on a level that would be a blessing to you. You know, yes. a blessing, yes. a blessing to him. Yes. You know, what if somebody walked up when Jesus was weeping over at Jerusalem and just put their arm around him and said, I love you and I want to hear what you got to say. I mean, it, it could be possible. 
I mean, what if somebody did? Jesus probably would have cried harder. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe it. That's right. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Powerful stuff. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I had all kind of plans for y'all sharing and stuff, and the Spirit of God just... It was so good. Please keep going. Just... We're hungry. Just... <clears throat> so I, you know, it is my hope that... Uh, what, some of the things I want to do is... Uh, um, I'm going to start off. I felt that the Lord, along this line from what Jesus said about parables, <clears throat> that it would be good to start, you know, up there in the beginning. What I also want to do, Lord willing, is I want to go through the Genesis story from in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and then down to you know, Adam, up to that point when, you know, and all the, all the wordings and all the things that, that are really full of the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't, we wouldn't think of it like that. We would think of it, oh, God did it that way or whatever, but it's, it's the way he sees, it's the way he thinks, and, and it's clues as to his being. <clears throat> so I wanted to do that, and then I wanted to follow that up with a set of scriptures, um, primarily from the New Testament, but some from the Old Testament that verify all the things that we've been talking about. <clears throat> and then, um, oh, it seems like there's, there was another area that I wanted to go to, but the last one then was to just look at some of the parables. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> I mean, just look at those parables with new eyes. Amen. You know, and, 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 but by then, by the time we get to that, folks, we need to have our hearts really softened, you know, or we're not going to get anything. We need to, we need to be, you know, Lord, I want you. I want to, I don't, I don't want to keep coming to you with my mind and, you know, putting you in a position because you love us to, to continue on a level that you don't want. And uh, so, anyway, so if y'all can be in prayer for, for those things, I would greatly appreciate it. Um.